give my mental health update so um it's eight months since my last surgery i um i had my surgery on march 10th it is now march i mean <laughs> it is now november 21st i think physically i'm feeling good like i'm not having pain um like before i had surgery i was in pain all the time i'm not having that anymore i am feeling like sometimes my abdomen feels like contracted because of this like all the scar tissue like because i had endometriosis everywhere if this is your first time watching any of my videos or this video i had surgery for stage four endometriosis back in march and my endometriosis was on my uterus ovaries bladder abdominal wall liver diaphragm and appendix and so I still have some endometriosis on my diaphragm and I think some on my liver as well, but all the other endometriosis was excised as much, you know, as it could be. Oh, and my bowels as well. I had it on my bowels as well. So the doctor got as much as he could. Of course, he couldn't get all of it so i'm not having pain but yeah like i said i'm having the contraction from the adhesions but i've been kind of doing like my own therapy that's been really helpful um i try to get into my abdomen as far as like doing deep soft tissue several times a week um just kind of taking cocoa butter and just kind of like massaging those adhesions and then i make sure that i stretch and then I also have one of these, like, um, this is like one of those wobble balls that you can sit on. And so what I do is I kind of like put something under it, put the foam roller underneath and then like tilt it this way. And then I'll lay my, the, like right below my rib cage right here. And I'll just like do diaphragmatic breathing to try to just get in deeper, to get kind of like a deeper um, massage and then I'll do it manually with my hands and then I'll do like some yoga stretching to kind of help those adhesions and long as I'm consistently doing that it does help break up the adhesion I do feel an improvement in my flexibility um as far as being able oh and then I'll also like do like back bends and stuff just to kind of really like stretch out my abdomen and that does help as long as I'm consistent with it sometimes I'm not as consistent and I can really tell um when I haven't been doing those exercises or those stretches in a while I'll start to feel those adhesions start to stick again also get adjusted um which is helpful as well um but yeah so I'm doing I I still have to do that work um after the surgery to help keep the adhesions to like not a minimum because I mean it's inside of my abdomen so I can't really like really get in there and get that but as much as I can it does help um it does help kind of like overall so yeah um one thing that I'm not having is my cycle so I think the last time I did a mental health update I did I wasn't having my cycle um I, it came back like in august um after i did like a progesterone treatment i had to take progesterone to try to jump start it because i was having hot flashes to the point where it's just uncomfortable so i did the progesterone um my cycle came back probably like a week or two after stopping the progesterone and then i had covid so when women have been saying like after they have COVID, their cycles have not been regular um, or they stop completely for like a few months. I haven't had my cycle since I had it in August. It's November. Um, I'm trying to give it a few months just in case that's from COVID. I am going to go ahead and let my doctor know that I'm not having my cycles to see if I can do the progesterone treatment again. Um to kind of just jump start but like not by any means am i trying to rush a cycle but i just want everything to be okay like i want everything to be 
doing what it's supposed to be doing and i'm starting to have hot flashes again and they're becoming uncomfortable like i am not prepared for menopause because i just can't even imagine because sometimes my hot flashes are so bad i just feel like sick like like it just makes me not feel good so and it's not but it's not as bad as before but yeah they're getting to that point where i just feel very uncomfortable when um when they get super intense so that's on the list next to see if i can do the progesterone treatment again my mental health i'm feeling a lot better like i'm feeling like i'm really starting to be able to enjoy life like before I started having endometriosis symptoms like I could go out all day and not even think about it not giving a second thought like I could just go out and do whatever I wanted to do and like now I'm getting to that point where I'm like wow like I've not been able to leave how my home for you know an, extent, an extended amount of time without having to have you know some type of pain medication on me some type of e-stem machine or tens unit on me um some type of like heating pad whether that be the ones that you stick on whether the ones that you can plug in the cigarette lighter um and now like i can leave home with just my keys my phone and my wallet and like i'm it's just now setting into me like i just like sit back and i think sometimes like wow i've been out all day and like where has the day gone and i did not have to rush home to jump on the heating pad or jump in a hot bath so like i'm like it's like that's just like setting in that like i can live life the way life is supposed to be lived and it like feels good like my mental health is better it's not a hundred percent but not because of my endometriosis um I just have, you know, anxiety and, you know, things that make me anxious. But, you know, as far as, like, my mental health, I've been happier than I have been in a very, very long time. And, like, I can genuinely say that I am happy and, like, believe it when I say it. Because, I mean, you know, in the past, I was like, yeah, I'm happy. But, like, now it's like I'm happy. Like, I do have anxiety and things that bother me and get me worked up. But that's just what comes along with anxiety and depression. But right now I'm in a really good headspace. And like, I'm hoping that this headspace is here to stay for a while. Granted, there were other factors that were affecting my mental health. Um, like last year when I was really in, in my, you know, in my endometriosis. But like now I'm like, feeling better i don't have any pain i'm single i'm out there not like out there like that but i'm out there i'm going places i'm doing stuff um yeah it's kind of hard though because you know now that i'm feeling so good and this is like where i kind of get a little hung up it's like i'm feeling so good and i'm ready to just be out but like there's covid so like i can't be as social as I feel and like, as I feel that I want to be because like, I'm still kind of like cautious about like big crowds and stuff like that and like going out. Um, so yeah, that's where I kind of get hung up because I feel like I want to live this life and I'm ready to be like, you know, out there and just, you know, life's happening, but it's not happening cause it's COVID and you know, stuff like that. So, um, but I mean, I'm just, you know, thankful and grateful for my health, that I'm able to feel this good, that I'm able to be this happy, you know, that I'm able, and I, like, I, I'm in the headspace where I want to socialize, like, that's big for me, like, because before this, I wasn't that social, because, you know, I never wanted to go out, I never, I was, even if I, like, made plans, I would, like, sometimes I would pray that they would get canceled, because I just didn't really want to go, but you know like sometimes you commit to stuff and you kind of have to go but yeah now i'm just like i'm ready to go like just you know let me know when we're going when you want to go and like i'm there like i'm feeling a lot of that and like that's something that i haven't been able to feel or been able to even do in a really long time um so yeah feeling good 
feeling great up here is clearer than it has been in a while um several years to be exact um what else um oh my how can i forget my fertility and adoption and all that stuff so my last video was my journey to motherhood video step one and it was me filling out my foster to adopt application um so update on that would be that my application actually got approved i did my first like interview this last week um early last week on tuesday and i get to move forward with doing the foster training what i have to do is the training because i have to become a licensed um foster parent foster home because i'm doing foster to adopt so my house and i have to be licensed to foster i'll start the training and then i'll do a home study which probably i don't know maybe toward the end of next month or probably january with the holidays with you know christmas and and new year's so i probably won't be able to do like the home study phase until like january i'm so excited that i'm just like well should i buy like should i buy baby stuff like should i buy a stroller like i'm like there and like everyone around me is just like wait hold on you don't even know what age you're gonna get yet you may buy a stroller and get like a first grader like you can't push a first grader in a stroller so it's like I don't know i'm just excited i'm trying to get like everything in my house you know just perfect um as you can see i got a new couch um and i got like a new tv not that that's kid stuff but my thing is is that i don't want to decorate one of my spare rooms just yet because i want them to be able to pick out like their own stuff like, granted, I can just, you know, get a bed, like a basic bed, but like, as far as like bedding and decoration, like, if they're old enough, then I want them to be able to pick out their own stuff. I just feel like it'll just be better for them to pick out their own stuff because I want them, I want this house to feel like their home and I want them to feel like they kind of got to put their touch on their space. Um so that's why i'm not going to like go out and buy and like decorate and stuff because i want them whether it be a boy or a girl i'm not really sure what i'm gonna get yet um but i just want them to be able to make this home theirs or feel like theirs and that they got a, a part and a say into you know what their room looks like and i think that's also good if they're like a little bit older especially being in the system you know kids you know you understand i i fully understand that kids that are in the system have gone through some sort of trauma so i wanted to give them like a like a home base like a safety like a place that they feel safe and they feel you know that they're accepted and they're welcome and you know this home is as much theirs as, as it is mine and so that's really important for me for them to feel that so yeah i'm excited and i'm also like oh my god i just have like my when i think about it it just makes me so happy but like i'm so antsy to start like the training and all of that stuff because i'm i'm just i'm just excited like this path is not what I envisioned when I was, you know, growing up. I thought, I'm 30. I just had my 30th birthday a few weeks ago. I thought that I would be done having kids by now. I thought that I would have, you know, two or three kids by now and I would be done having children. I haven't even started. So, like, the fact that I'm getting to you know even do this process because if this option wasn't available to me i don't know like what i do i don't know what my headspace would be like i don't know like how i would be able to do like ivf and stuff like that and i'm gonna have a little bit of fear 
with IVF um, or like any type of like fertility that would cause like that would require me to do like um, any type of hormones because like I'm feeling so good that I don't want to take any hormones at this moment that you know may affect my endometriosis that may be a complete irrational you know fear as far as endometriosis but I don't know like I'm kind of scared to go that route and it's expensive and you know I don't I'm kind of scared to spend that much money and invest that much money for something that may not work. I may be $30,000 in the hole trying to do enemy, I mean, trying to do IVF and not have a pregnancy. Like that scares me. Like, I don't know. I'm not really a gambling woman. And right now this path, the chances are higher, you know? So I don't know. And I'm okay with, you know, adoption. Like at this point, I just want to start my family. I want to have kids. And like at this point, you know, having biological children, if it, the way I feel right now is if it comes to me, it comes to me. And if it doesn't come to me, it doesn't come to me like that's how I feel right now as long as there is some type of way for me to have children whether that be biological or not I feel like I'm okay with that if that makes sense because um I don't know like I don't know I'm just excited I don't I just don't I don't I don't know what to say. I'm just I'm just excited and I just I'm just I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't smiled or been this excited about something in a long time and and I don't know. I just feel I just feel very hopeful for for this. Like for this journey and and I'm like I'm ready I'm I'm so ready like I I don't know I'm just I don't know <laughs> I'm like I'm so ready for it but yeah like that's my mental health update I'm I'm doing good I'm feeling good you know I haven't been in such a happy place in a while and I'm I'm just grateful and I'm thankful that I even get to experience life like this like y'all like is this what life is like because I didn't know like I didn't I had no idea but yeah that's my mental health update like I'm just ready for anything and everything that comes my way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any advice or if you've been in this position as far as like foster to adopt and have any advice, leave them in the comments below as well. Like, let me know, give me the tips and the tricks and oh, you know, let me know how, how was your experience, you know, and, and how do you feel if you've adopted like how do you feel and like what do i need to adjust to or what do i need to think about if i'm like missing anything just let me know i want all of the information like just pour it in and give it to me i'm so ready i'm so excited like oh okay i'm done i'm done thank you for watching like comment and subscribe like i already said and i'll see you in the next video bye guys mm -hmm.